Hey everybody, it's Austin, and my birthday gift finally came in. It's the five drawer mechanics cart in slate gray. So of course it's gonna match the truck, which I'm super pumped about. I know this isn't my normal content, but I was really excited about my gift and I'm excited to get it put together and just show you guys, cause I think it's gonna match and that makes me happy. So hope you guys are having a great start to your new year and staying warm wherever you are and hope you enjoy this video and we'll see what the cool tool what the tool cart ends up looking like and what we can get put in it for anything we need to do on the tundra so stay tuned all right well i gotta film this one man job just in case something bad happens. so let's see how i get the top of the back of the truck on my own Well, we'll see how it turned out. All right, well, it's in here now and we are getting it taken apart so we can assemble it because you have to pull the toolbox out of the box, um, out of the bottom shelf before you can get going and you have to get the parts out of the toolbox. So. Made a cup of coffee, a little bit cold out here. Got the heater running, so it maybe takes the chill out of the air. But now we can go ahead and get the wheels on the bottom so we can move this thing around, or at least the base, so we can add the uprights one step at a time. Woo! That's for you, Jonathan Yench. And that was really hot, goodness blow on it first or something it is uh it is steamy and yes it's cold out here it's not that bad it's it's 50 so it's not that bad but that looks pretty cool Woo! nice all right so here's the setup we've got right here we've got the bottom shelf the toolbox dog hey good boy Okay, you go boy. He's the best dog, garage dog. But he kind of distracts me, so this is taking way longer. But we've got the wheels right there that we're going to put on um, to the base. And there's, like I said, there's two packages of screws, or bolts rather. And the ones that you're supposed to use for the um, base, I believe are these, because it has washers and nuts in them. And the bolts are a little bit longer. You can see... Maybe that's an inch or so long. Whereas the ones in this package are close, but probably three quarters of an inch. And those are for like the uprights that will attach to the corners of that. So we're gonna go ahead and get um, the wheels installed on the base. And the, all that takes is a socket and the uh, bolts will push through the holes and have a square end on them. So. Let me open these up and show you and we'll show how to install a couple and then I'll get the rest installed. But make sure when you're installing them, you put the two swiveling ones on one side and the two stationary wheels on the other so you're able to move it. All right, so we've got the bottom shelf you know, up so we don't have to work on the ground. And I'm doing the swivel wheels first so that when I lay it on this end to work on the other side, the wheels will turn sideways and it's not gonna roll all around on me. But um, all you have to do is put it up in this slot and then you put the bolts through the other side here. And it's nice, blackened hardware. And the bolts are round, um, not rounded, sorry, squared at the end there. So that will slide into the oval hole um, right here. So that holds it holds itself in place, which is really nice because then you just run a 13 millimeter socket onto this end uh, to tighten it down after you've put your washer on. But something I was super surprised by is there's a grease zerk on these swivel wheels, which is super cool. I, you know, for Harbor Freight made things, you know, they've always gotten the impression that they're lower quality items, but to put a grease zerk on something means you're showing a little bit of care and that you're expecting it to 
last long enough that it needs to be re-greased and it's going to be a serviceable item which i think is super cool um and the wheels here you know they're not rubberized but you know they've got a nice coating on them so i don't know if you were working in a place where the floor is um something you don't want to get marred up like that's nice something to think about so um i'm gonna go ahead and slap these wheels on it is a little bit tedious because you got to hold the wheel in place while you're trying to funnel through the the uh, bolts and get the nut on so um, I may end up using a clamp to hold um, the wheel to the uh, body of the shelf at some point, but for now it's working okay. I just throw on an initial nut without the washer and just throw it on to get it started and kind of hold it in place. And then I can go ahead and put um, the other four on, which is helpful. So we're going to use our little trusty Milwaukee little impact and throw these on and Hopefully it doesn't take us too much longer. So something worth noting is the paint feels really good on this and it definitely is built up around the edges of the holes. So if you can push through to get the square to kind of lodge in those holes, the square that um, holds the bolt in place, it'll be really helpful because it was pretty tough getting these to thread on because they're nylon lock washers and to get them to spin this bolt has to be held in place. And the only way to do that is if the square is seated in the uh, hole there. So if you can push it through, like I just did with that one, where it is like holding itself in place, it's really helpful. All right. So we got the bottom of the cart finished, which took me way longer than I expected it to. But now we are on to the uprights, which all you have to do is bolt them on with four bolts um, from the outside. And like the last ones, the shoulder of the bolt will hold it in place. So you just got to run your 13 millimeter socket on the bolt. And it, it really easily goes on. And it's much easier than this casters because they're not lock nuts. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put on the last one to show you guys. And then what we have to do after that is put the brackets across the halfway point across each four um, uprights and then get that set into it which because it's just me, I am not gonna be able, oh goodness, I'm not gonna be able to do that on my own. So I watched a video um, of a guy, I'll tag his channel below, but um, we'll lay it down and put it on that way and then set it up. So it's an easier way to do it without hurting your back if you don't have a second person to help you lift. So we'll get this last one put on, show you how easy it is, and then we'll be on our way. You can see they're all locked in and it's still able to move a little bit because once we get the brackets on, we want it to be a little bit flexible. So I'm super excited to get that on there. I just love this color. The guy when we were leaving Harbor Freight picking this up walked out to the Tundra and saw that it was the cement gray color and was like, do you just like all your products to match? And I felt a little bougie, but hey, if it can match, I love it. My camper's this kind of gray color, and I really like it. So nice to have a little bit of consistency. Um, but I really did want the lime green one initially. When this color came out, I was like, heck yeah. So let's go ahead and get the uh, middle brackets on. Sorry, a little bit of a tangent. But we'll get the little brackets on and finally get the big toolbox where it's supposed to be. All right, so now we're on to installing these um, support pieces. So this is the short side piece that's gonna go right here with the same bolts that we used to mount the uprights. 
But on this side, where my swivel casters are, right there you can see, is the side that we're gonna mount the um, uh, basket that goes at this point that can hold like your WD-40, any paint cans, any aerosols, things you have like that, or of course, whatever you wanna put in it. But that also goes on this bracket. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we get that opened and install it um, along with this. So I'm gonna throw a bolt through this piece just to hold it up and then we'll get the bracket or basket um, installed with it. All right, so you're on the inside of the toolbox now and I'm gonna, I took the bracket out so I can put the bolt through and hopefully hold that in place while I get the nut on. So now, the paint too, so it holds itself in place. Now I can take this one off. Then I think we can run this down just a smidge with the gun and keep it snug so let me show you what this looks like all right so here it is from the outside so this is the aerosol bucket and i just love the paint on this it's so smooth and well done so we got the aerosol bucket held and the bracket that'll hold up the toolbox once it comes down and sits on it or at least sits close to it. So now I can go ahead and put in long brace, long brace, and another short base onto that side. And I think we'll be ready to slide in the bucket. So stay tuned for that. We are making headway. So I went and got all the brackets, cross arms put on, and they are snugged into place. And I went around with my little impact and snugged up every bolt that I left kind of loose for these uprights since we got the cross members in place. And we got a cute doodle just sleeping in the chair. He loves it. Well, um, also it, show, it doesn't show in the directions exactly if these are supposed to go on top of the sides or underneath. Like they can also go underneath this lip. It's only a difference of probably a 16th of an inch, but I put them on top because they're the beefiest and I felt like I'd rather have the most weight on this and supporting on that. So I don't think it matters either way, but just wanted to include that in my thoughts. So I'm gonna go ahead and tip this back on its side. Um, I'm gonna have to tape the top closed because it's not on the hinges when you get it. And then I can tip it back and then lay this down and slide it into place, hopefully. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so this is the setup we have so far. I have some cardboard laid down to protect the paint and on a side note, Miami just scored to beat the Bills going into the playoffs. Or not beat the Bills, take the lead on the Bills. Which, uh, as a Chiefs fan, I'd be down not playing the Bills because they're pretty good. I think we could beat them, hopefully, but they're really good. So, that's a side note. But we got this set up with the foam behind it just to elevate it off the ground when I tip it back. Then I'm going to tip it back and let it lean. The lid is taped down. Hopefully that stays. I may put a piece of cardboard in front of the rocking horse. So if it does fall open, it doesn't dent it. But then I'm going to pick this up and slide it onto the bottom of the toolbox. That should work. So we'll see how that goes.
Oh man. Remember folks, when you're doing things like this, lift with your back, not your legs. It's, it's a hoax. You gotta lift with your back. It helps. I'm just kidding. Don't take any, uh, medical advice from me, but we got it up. We got it up. Let me undo this. So it rolls. Whew. All right. Let me, uh, get this situated so we can look at it better. All right, so now that we've got it upright and situated how it's supposed to be, we just gotta take these four corner bracket pieces and put them in the corners, as the name would entail, and get them lined up um, so you can put your put your uh, final bolts and nuts through. But something you need to take into account is on this side, the handle that it comes with um, will go on the lower bolt holes. There's a top and a bottom. And this needs to go on the bottom one uh, per the instructions um, before you fasten it on. And then also something to account for, if you got the table, the side table, this will also need to go on with the bolts that you're about to install with the corner bracket. So make sure you do that with it because this takes both screw holes or bolt holes. So make sure that you put this on as you go or else you'll have to take it apart. So. We're gonna go ahead and do the handle first and then we'll we'll go on to the table. Pretty excited, we're getting super close. All right, so we've got the bolts in the corners for the handle. I got the top ones in first and then I was able to put the handle on the lower mount down here. And I'll have to tighten them up, but I didn't wanna do that yet because I didn't put the back ones in because the lid is flipped over so I can't get to those just yet but we're gonna go ahead and do this side and make sure you put these there before you put the bolts in because I had to redo that side because I forgot to put that in so just a note so you don't mess up but it's looking pretty darn good all right so we've got all the corner bolts in with the exception of the ones that will hold this on so we'll have two on each side and it comes with silver bolts but the my table came with all black so we're going to stay with the factory bolts that look clean like this and then so it helps to have a partner spouse friend child hold this straight up so you can put the bolts in and get it tied down so i'm gonna have some help we got the side table installed so you can see the black bolts there got it all fastened in and so this just lifts up and that's your support and then if you want to go stow it, you just, I think just hang it down. I haven't actually done it yet. But there it is in stow mode. And if you want to put it up, lift it like this, fold it in, and then it catches on that catch down there. And you've got yourself a nice little flat surface, which if you're anything like me and uh, you have a flat surface, it gets junk put on it. Good Lord, that's embarrassing. I shouldn't have shown you. So this will be nice to be able to put down so I don't put stuff on it. And I have at least a, uh, you know, four square foot, not even that, two square foot piece of flat surface in the garage to work on. So, well, now we're going to install the gas struts, which you need, um, four nuts for and I haven't dropped any but I only have three so I'm just gonna have to borrow one from the um from the the other bolts the longer ones and hopefully it's the same size so we're gonna get going on that all you have to do is <clears throat> take it out of here and should have taken it out before Take it out of here and you'll put the shock part, the thin part down and then this will uh, go into the top. I'll show you guys what that looks like after we get one installed. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install the second shock for you guys, or strut rather. And I don't have, I'm missing one of the flare nuts. So um, 
This is what it should come with. It's like flare nut with knurling to hold it. But the ones that came from the other part of the kit, uh, the lock washers with the nylock in there work as well. So you go ahead and you put the, um, I'm gonna bring in a little bit better. You put the part that's the chrome part down and then I'm gonna go ahead and get that nut on there. And you leave the nuts that are on the strut in place. There's actually nuts on here, but they they stay in place. So we're gonna turn that. Get that in there and then throw this nylon nut on there. <clears throat> Which causes this to spin. So I need to screw down the nut so it bottoms out against itself, I guess. Or get a second wrench to hold that down. I didn't have to do that on the other side. So, but all you, you gotta tighten these down and then it'll work out just fine. But I'm gonna find another wrench for that. All right, so I ended up having to use one of the flare nuts from the kit that came with the side table because I wasn't provided with enough of the black flare nuts. And I know I didn't drop any, so. I'll look around to see if I find any, but I don't think so. So I put that on and then I did have to hold that nut with some needle nose to get that to thread on, but it looks really good. I'm super pleased with it. And then it goes shuts like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put on the handle and I should be able to wrap this baby up.